Yes, we need to recharge, but we cannot rest. All souls, we who believe in freedom, cannot rest. Today is about more than the calling and installing of a new minister. It is a day to renew and to reaffirm this congregation's reason for being. It is a day to renew your calling. We've been called to offer a distinct witness in this town. We are different from the people in the churches down the street and all around this city. We are different from people who have no faith community. We are different from people who enter these hallowed halls as visitors. We are different and we are called to an undertaking so important that if we truly understood it, it would, we would probably fear that we are not up to the task. Because few of us have the courage or the self-confidence to believe that we are playing an indispensable role in a movement of divine proportions. I'm talking about freedoms unfolding in human society. I'm talking about loving beyond belief. Here is how my predecessor in this pulpit, Dr. John Wolfe, described it at my installation. The installation of a minister to a free pulpit is one of the most remarkable, one of the most courageous acts of affirmation of belief in our democratic society. To have that kind of confidence so as to provide such a place in a religious community for the freest expression of doubt and faith, of conviction and yearning, of truth and opinion is unparalleled. There is no constraint placed upon the one who stands in this pulpit No creedal test or examination, no burden of doctrine, no article of faith. Where else in the world, where else anywhere, what sheer extravagance of the human spirit, what more explicit exercise of religious freedom? By this act of installation, this congregation reaffirms its reason for being. You, the members of all souls, have the unique privilege and responsibility to protect this pulpit as a place for the freest voice wherewith we can speak to the conscience of the culture the freest voice wherewith to question openly and publicly the prevailing assumptions, the common morality, the existence of the popular gods. The freest voice wherewith to plumb the depths of our being, to search out the dearest, freshest, deep down things. By installing Barbara in this church, you are supporting the most sacred trust, a free pulpit. Tell her as you have me and the long legacies of ministers to cry out loud, spare not, to lift up her voice like a trumpet in controversy and compassion. My charge to you has three points, and that is the first. Your job is to protect the freedom of the pulpit, just as we will protect the freedom of those pews in the hope of protecting the freedom of this nation. Because those who believe in freedom cannot rest. You do not have to agree with everything that gets said from this pulpit. But I hope that you'd be willing to lay down your life to protect its freedom. Because a world without religiously free expression is a frightening world. And if not with your life, 
at least be willing to continue to support it with your money, with your time, and with your highest sense of moral purpose. Those who believe in freedom cannot rest. The second is to afford Barbara the same immense love and respect that you've given me for almost 20 years now. She has passion and commitment. She has wisdom and sensitivity. She has a deep and meaningful understanding of Unitarian Universalism. And she has a vision for the future of an inclusive community and society. Be sure to let her lead. Let her speak into your life. And when she's not leading, be sure to let her rest. Take good care of her and she will take good care of you. That's the agreement we've had, and that's the agreement we will have with her. That's how it's been, and I love you for it, and I am better for it, and I hope you are better for it too. Finally, remember the difference between our history and our legacy. If you arrived on time to this service and found some parking and were able to get in here by 1030, you saw the visual parade of ministers on the screen who've served this church. For the first 60 years, they were all men. Since then, a number of outstanding women have become ministers of this church. We've had gay and lesbian ministers and a transgender person on our ministerial team. And yet, until 11 years ago, they were all people of European descent. The words on the front of our hymnals proclaim this is a living tradition. Our history are the stories and the events we recount. But our heritage is free religion and a love that is bigger than any belief. Our history has included multiple ministers and many lay leaders and many buildings around this city. Our heritage is providing a home for the free spirit to evolve and flourish because we know that love is not love if it's not free. We know that corruption flourishes without freedom and freedom dies without responsible people tending to it. By being here today, you are part of this church's history. My charge to you is to be a part of its heritage. Our history is what's been done. Our heritage is what we will do and leave to others. We have a beautiful building here. But I hope you never confuse our spectacular building with our spectacular purpose. We come here for nourishment and safety and friendship and warmth and all the power strip Judaism things that the rabbi described to us. <laughs> and we must go forth from here and live our values in the world. That's why we have clear windows in this sanctuary. So even when we're in here, we're looking out at the world and remembering where our real religion exists. You are installing a minister today, but you, my friends, do the ministry of this church. We are the ministers, but the ministry is yours. The true ministry of love and freedom is done by endless volunteers, people who care about one another, people who sacrifice for the church and their community and the world around them. I'll leave you with this short story that I've told once before. There was once a man traveling through the countryside of New England, and he came upon a group of people in a field, and they were building something. He went over to inquire what they were doing. He first came to the entrance and he saw a man with a hammer and sawdust on his jeans and he asked him what he was doing. And he said, I am framing a doorway. And then he walked over and he saw a couple of people and they had safety goggles on and gloves and their clothes and their boots were covered with colorful shards of glass. And he asked them, what are you doing? And they said, we are putting in stained glass windows. And finally, he went over to a group of young people who were on a raised platform who were assembling a pulpit, much like this one. And he asked them, what are they doing? And they said, we are building a cathedral to God and the human spirit. These youth knew exactly what they were doing. They were building a cathedral to God and the human spirit. And that's exactly what we are doing. 
with our time, with our talent, with our treasure, and everything we do in the name of freedoms unfolding among human beings on this earth. We are building a cathedral to the God of love and the human spirit. A home for people who love beyond belief, for those who believe in freedom. The world's need this now, the world needs this now more than ever. And it needs it, it will need it until the end of time. You and I are closing the book on the first century of all souls in Tulsa. It's been an epic tale. For 98 years, we've had people bound together. binding their their lives and their families in a covenant of love and service. It's included people who've kept their vows and those who've broken their vows. We've endured murders and murderers. We've had adults and adulterers. We've had sexists and racists and homophobes. And we've had prophets of equality and justice. There's a reason that this church was not named All Saints Church. (laughs) Neither Barbara, nor I, nor any of us ministers could serve All Saints. We are all souls. We are far from perfect And yet we are building a cathedral to God and the human spirit. Don't forget it. I love you. And so I charge you to keep on keeping on. Amen. with us online today. We love connecting with people all across the country and around the world sharing our powerful message of love beyond belief. There's something new happening here. You can now join All Souls as a virtual member. Our virtual membership is designed for friends who live outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma and who want to engage with All Souls in a meaningful way. You can be part of an expanding family, a global family really, wherever you are. If you live in Oklahoma, Ohio, or Orange County, California, Canada, or Cameroon. By becoming a virtual member, you'll be able to deepen your connections with members and friends here in Tulsa and with members wherever you are. Each week, you'll receive special All Souls content tailored for you, our virtual members. Virtual members have access to pastoral care, to personal prayers, and also receive invitations to exclusive web events. You can learn more, and if you're ready, you can become a virtual member today by visiting allsoulschurch.org forward slash virtual membership. We're grateful our ministries are having a positive impact on your life, and we want to share the good news of Love Beyond Belief with more and more people. So no matter what, we need your support to keep this ministry growing and thriving. So please consider making a gift today. You can do so by texting LOVEBB for Love Beyond Belief to 73256 or simply visit our website. You are a blessing in our lives. May you be blessed. And be a blessing.